Amazing. So welcome to the teach in um, the UK, but we're going to obviously focus in on the southwest of England. So um, we'll obviously talk about ANZ UK as a whole, um, how we can support you on your journey from wherever you are, whether it be in Australia or whether you be in New Zealand. And we'll really focus in on the southwest of England. So Becky, as I mentioned, is in our Bristol office. So we'll talk about the opportunities, not just in Bristol, but in the surrounding areas as well. So we'll give you some really good insight knowledge into what works available, what's good about living in the Southwest, um, some hidden gems, some tricks and trips that tricks and tips about the move that you may not know about and then yeah answer any questions that you have as well and then give you that oversight of you know ANZ UK as well which we mentioned too so um we'll jump on into it so welcome everyone I can see lots of names on the call too which is great so um hopefully I get to speak to you individually at some point following on from the webinar but a little bit about myself so my name's Tyler and I'm the UK overseas resource team leader so my role with ANZ UK is leading a team that supports educators traveling from Australia New Zealand and then Canada onwards to the United Kingdom. So myself personally, I've been working with ANZ UK for five years. Um, I started off working actually as a teacher in Melbourne as a CRT. I'm a PE health teacher, had the travel bug, really wanted to get to live overseas um, and booked a one-way ticket to move over to the UK teaching with ANZ UK. I taught for about a year working in London and then spent three and a half years working in our London office where I was really lucky to um, work closely with Becky and the team over in the Bristol and the southwest of England and um, yeah absolutely loved my time living in the UK unbelievable part of the world to live I think anyone who's got the itch to do it I know everyone on this call or the zoom call probably has that itch which is great um, it definitely one of the best decisions I ever made was making that journey over to the UK Lived there for yeah four and a half years, and since coming back in 2020, have been working with ANZ UK still. Um, played a couple of different roles, but uh, yeah, most recently helping educators, as I mentioned, making that journey over to the UK. So, really keen to talk about the beautiful pastures across England, but we're yeah, like I said, focusing on the southwest. And um, yeah, that's me, Becky. I also um, yeah, I'm Becky. I manage the the region um, in well, kind of Bristol and kind of into the southwest. Uh, I've been I make myself sound really old, but I have been doing this for about 19 years now. So I kind of started doing it pretty much straight from uni. Um, got into this because I wanted to be a teacher. So, but started doing this and then didn't. Um, but I, um, the reason why I've been on it, on board with ANZ UK now for about two and a half years. And the reason why I came on board with ANZ UK was basically to start working with people like yourselves, um, just so I could start working with people from overseas and just kind of having different kind of conversations. And in the Southwest of England, England, um, having people coming in from overseas like Australia, New Zealand, that kind of thing is quite a new thing for the schools in this area and the schools love it. So it's really exciting for me and it's really exciting for the schools. And so, yeah, I was brought on board with um, a team of people to basically launch ANZ UK outside of London in the UK. And I love it. Yeah, love me. Yeah, amazing. And it's great to have someone obviously on the ground in the UK too, which is awesome. So um, mm -hmm. as mentioned, um, for anyone who didn't get right at the start, I'm working in our Collingwood office today. So um, you might see a few people uh, running behind me, but it is um, mm -hmm. school holidays here at the moment. So it's a little bit more relaxed too. So um, mm -hmm. what we want to do now is find out a little bit about everyone on the call. So um, we would usually um, throw to a poll so everyone can input their answers, but we're going to mix it up a little bit differently today. So I've just posted into the chat. I'm just really keen for us to know where everyone is tuning in from. So whether it be Victoria, Melbourne, New South Wales, a regional area, um, New Zealand. Um, if we've got any outliers that might be tuning in from elsewhere in the world, um, do let us know. Oh, we've got New Zealand, Auckland, love it. Amazing. Yeah, a few Melbournians as well, which is great. Um, and then a mm -hmm. few Sydney siders too, which is really good. So um, amazing, guys. So um, yeah, in terms of our team, um, I'll probably most likely speak with most of the, the people on this call, but um, we've got a, a team member in New Zealand as well, Claire, who's Sophie, being from Auckland. Um, she'll be best place to get in contact with yourself too. But um, yeah, everyone else might end up. Oh, and Julia as well too, Kiwis on the, on the line, which is great. So um, yeah, amazing that. So cool. So we'll keep on moving through. These photos here as well are from from um, our, um, one of them's from a very recent event. One of them's from an event a couple of years ago um, in our UK offices. So 
We're doing this on May the 7th, too, and we'll talk about this during the call, but these are from educators who have recently arrived. So we do welcome events three times a year. So dependent upon when you're looking to touch down in the UK, you'll be invited to our office, potentially in our London office, but we hope to be able to do something similar in our Bristol, or we will do something similar in our mm -hmm. Bristol office as well. Um, and you'll get invited to a pub, meet other educators who are journeying over from the um, different parts of the world and yeah, do a tour of the city, whether it be Bristol, whether it be London, wherever it is, we'll make sure you come along and meet everyone who's um, yeah, recently arrived with, um, into the UK too. So um, for today, um, so what we'll cover, so we'll do an introduction on ANZ UK, some of you may be familiar with ANZ UK, some of you may not. So we'll touch about um, us as a, a business and how we can support you on your journey. Um, educators, we'll talk about educators who have made the journey over to the southwest of England specifically. Um, we'll talk about the why, the how, the where to live um, and hopefully answer a lot of questions you may have working in English schools as well. So that will probably be a bit more generic, not just Southwest, even though we'll touch on that, but just working underneath the English curriculum. Um, the types of work available, Becky will talk to you about, um, you know, the needs of schools at the moment as well. Um, it's quite busy at the moment over at the UK team. So Becky will definitely um, uh, talk about that. Uh, you get some handy relocation bonuses as well. If you uh, look at some certain contracts, lanes at UK, um, we'll talk about the visas, compliance, setting up for all things English life, national insurance numbers, banks, bank accounts, uh, the visa that you need, etc. Um, we'll talk about the community at ANZ UK as well. We've got a Facebook group that we'll share with everyone too. Um, like we've touched on in that photo before and the one on the screen now, we're really big on the events and making sure everyone's feeling a part of an educated community because we know that a lot of people are traveling solo. Talk about PD, local knowledge that Becky will give everyone on the call. Um, hopefully I can pass on some local knowledge a little bit, even though I haven't been there in a couple of years, but um, I do love the Southwest of England. Um, and then questions and queries. So yeah, please just shout out um, if anyone has any um, that pop up. Before we go to the next slide, um, we've got a couple polls. We'll keep them coming. Um, we want to know, has everyone been, to, or has anyone been to the UK before? And then also specifically, have you been to the Southwest of England before? So a two-part question there. Um, so if everyone just want to get back to us on that one, that would be amazing. Ooh, fabulous. Yes. <laughs> All right, so we've got a bit of a mix here, which is good. So we've got a, a, a few yeses and yeses and a couple no's and no's and a yes and a no here and there, which is good. So um, amazing. So cool. That's great to know, guys. So um, yeah, if you haven't been there before, you've got a, a treat ahead of you, which is great. So um, we'll talk about all the good things, which um, the Southwest offer as well as we go through. But um, before we sort of start like focusing on what's happening specifically in England, we'll talk a little bit about ANZ UK as a whole as a company. So um, Hopefully everyone may have heard of us before prior to the webinar, but if you haven't, um, we are a global business. We have offices across um, five different countries in Australia, the UK, Canada, the USA, and New Zealand. Um, in Australia, we um, have offices in most of the Eastern states, Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland, ACT, um, where we can support locally for early childhood, casual contract perm work in primary and secondary schools as well. Um, so if you're working, um, if you're looking to work before you go to the UK and you're living in Oz, do let us know. Um, there's a good chance we could support you, whether it be for a contract before you go or just doing some casual work as well. Um, so do let us know. Um, UK, obviously, we'll discuss in plenty of detail. And then Canada, we actually have a team in Canada that help educators go to the UK and to Australia and to New Zealand. So you might see it on our website, but we can't help educators heading to Canada. Um, in the USA, we trade under Scoot Education. Um, the biggest thing with Scoot Education in the USA, it isn't available to educators who don't have an American passport. So it's only a small ed pool of educators we can support there. Again, you might see on our website, but if you have an American passport, do let us know. We might be able to support. And then the other um, option is um, New Zealand, where we trade under EP education um, and we can support in um, across the two North and South Islands, um, what Christchurch, Wellington and Auckland, um, there where we've got our offices. And then if you're looking to, um, yeah, maybe go from Australia to New Zealand or even once you've done your trip over in the UK and you want to come back, um, obviously just keep us in the loop because there could be a good chance we might be able to help you outside of the UK journey too. Um, and these lovely gentlemen up in the top right of the call um, are the two um, founders of ANZ UK. So they're still working with the business now. Um, and ANZ UK was essentially founded by Dan on the right of the um, photo there. 
sending educators to um, the UK from Australia after Dan had lived in the UK and realised there's a bit of a need for overseas educators to work in the UK. Dan partnered up with uh, BG, Ben, um, who's still the director of the UK business and um, teamed up and yeah, 16 years later, Becky and I are still, um, you know, a part of the team. Well, I should say still part of the team. We're now a part of the team that started 16 years ago and helping educators like everyone on the call journey over to the UK. So um, we'll, we'll keep on rolling through. Again, questions, um, please please feel free to shout out at any point. Um, but Becky, give us the scoop. What's happening in the UK? Um, how, how's the, the vibe? What's, what's, what's going on on the ground? So <clears throat> UK wise is obviously we, 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 we shall, we'll start with the dreaded C word, but we'll move on very swiftly. Um, so obviously uh, globally, it's been very COVIDified for the last couple of years. Um, we are very much coming out of that now, which is fabulous. Um, so um, it is still a thing. Um, the other Becky, the better Becky, as I call her, is going to be doing this webinar today. She hasn't joined, unfortunately, because she has just got the virus, um, but she's absolutely fine, just a bit of a cold. Um, so that has had an impact in the last couple of years, but we are most definitely coming out of that now. Um, so it, it does very, very much feel like business is normal now. Um, all businesses are open. Um, masks are now not mandatory anywhere. Um, there aren't limits on numbers of people in households and uh, sporting events and things like that so it is very very much business as usual um covid is still very much a thing um but there are there is um you know individual businesses and individual companies will have different policies on it but it, it is very much feeling like business as usual now which is great um um in the school side of things, um, they're very, very busy. Um, obviously, I'm sure it's probably exactly the same in Australia. They've gone through an unprecedented time, and so there's lots of catching up to do. And um, there's been lots of staff changes, all that kind of fun stuff. So we are very, very busy. So finding people enough work is absolutely not a problem at all. So that's really positive. But just general life here is it's just kind of feeling really positive and hopeful i i um i love spring so obviously we're just going to spring over here now um and um, everything's starting to turn nice and green um so yeah so i definitely have got a spring in myself i've i've gone to get i've gone a bit feral this year and i've booked a lot of holidays and weekends away which i'll tell you all about in a bit um so yeah so it's just it's just starting to feel like really exciting again and it's like a real good energy and like you know even all my family and my friends it's just it's it's just kind of that feeling of hope again and that and just looking forward to to life again so great great time to kind of start thinking making plans and coming over here um I'm always if you'll have contact details and stuff at the end but if ever you've got any questions or just want any, any advice whatever you can contact me you know any time even if you don't ever work for ANZ UK it's not a problem because I love kind of speaking to people and helping them make the journey so yeah so that's kind of where we're at as it stands at the moment yeah amazing um, that, Becky. it's good to know that like, obviously mm -hmm. like um like adapting to a new normal is probably like the easiest way to put mm -hmm. it hey like um I know yourself yeah. like even just doing you know a couple overseas trips which um not has been mm -hmm. too accessible for many people especially us Australians as well and myself yeah. um am coming to the UK for a wedding in uh July which is great so I'll be spending some time mm -hmm. with Becky and um who knows maybe some people on the call who are journeying over in the next couple of months so um yeah, yeah definitely is a lot more accessible international travel which is great so um mm -hmm. we obviously um yeah still promote to um yeah just ask questions about your plans your journey um but it is good to know that there is plenty of work available in uk schools at the moment in particular um in the schools in the southwest as well so yeah, massively um, which is great. So um, before we move on to the next um, slide, guys, we just want to ask another question. Um, so just to learn a little bit more about everyone on the call. So we just want to know um, what everyone's, uh, I guess, um, background is within education. So whether everyone's a teacher or whether they be a teaching assistant. Um, we didn't actually put that down, but whether you might be new to education um, altogether. So um, if everyone just wants to sort of post in your specialism, if you would. I'm personally a PE health teacher, if that helps anyone. So mm -hmm. um, I haven't been in the classroom for about four or five years. Um, still miss, mm -hmm. the, miss the kids a, a fair bit, but um, you can see there's a nice mix here, which is good. So. Oh, really good. Yeah. I could find you all jobs times <laughs> over. Which is good. So um, um, yeah, yeah, amazing definitely. guys. Um, mm. Good mix there too, which is great. So a few um, mm -hmm. teachers, primary, secondary, and then um, some support staff as well, which is great. So mm -hmm. um, amazing guys. So um, yeah, so this one here, why teach in the southwest of England? So um, there's a few things which are, I guess, are, um, 
maybe just generic in terms of overseas journey. But Becky, um, what what could you leverage off this in terms of people making the journey, not just to the southwest of England, but also overseas as well, just in terms of what um, they could experience living over in the southwest? Um, so south, Southwest, I actually moved to the Southwest myself um, straight from university, as I mentioned before. So I come from um, a, a, a local authority called Shropshire, which is very central in England, very green, very pretty. But unless you want to work in a card shop or a charity shop, there's not much prospects there employment wise. So I moved down to Bristol um, straight from university, like I said, about 20 years ago. And I just I absolutely love the city. Um, I. I I, I kind of live on the outskirts now. So I've done this kind of city living. I live in a little village on the outskirts now. Um, but what I really like about Bristol is there's, it's, it's very historical. It's very pretty. There's loads to do. In the summer, there's like festivals every weekend, whether it's like beer festival, food festival, music festival, harbour festival, balloon festival. There's there's all sorts of stuff. And so there's always stuff to do. Um, so I love that. And and also for me, I I, I have a, I'm a bit of a travel bunny as well. So like I, I, I'm a bit geeky. I like um, there's something over here called National Trust in English Heritage, which is all the old um, like stately homes and castles and stuff like that. So there's a lot of that around here. So um, there's loads of pretty things to see do. You travel for 20 minutes. Um, in any direction out of the city you're into the countryside so it's not like massive areas of urban industrial sprawl like you get in some other cities um, so Birmingham, Manchester, London and so that's a really really big appeal to me and it, equally um, as I mentioned before my little travel bug is we've got Bristol Airport which is um, just on this kind of south west side of Bristol and you can fly everywhere so there's a couple of um, local European airlines which can get you in and out of Europe really really easily so um, like I said I've got back from France on Monday so I did a little trip to wine region in France which Tyler's also done. saint Mignon in Bordeaux so yeah. if anyone wants to make a note oh, of um, that part of fabulous. the world it's, um, it's yeah. very nice. Oh, <laughs> it's lovely lovely so yeah. I literally drank my own body weight in wine and cheese so um, but yeah so I'm going to Madrid in two weeks time I'm just a three-day weekend I'm going I oh, literally my travel life so I'm going to Iceland I'm going to Cyprus I'm going to Croatia I've got loads of but really exciting I'm coming to Australia this Christmas yeah. so and I'm coming to Melbourne for the first time so if anybody wants to kind of meet up or chat about journeys whatever if you're still in Oz then then more than happy to do that but that's the one really good thing about like I said um, being in the southwest there's just loads of options of things to do and places to go which I absolutely love um, so that's kind of like obviously southwest and specific. Um, schools wise, um, there's a really good mix actually. I, I kind of cut some of the areas that we look after, I call it a little bit Middle Earth because it's very, very um, picture postcard, kind of like little towns and villages. We deal with actually a lot of schools outside of Bristol. So we deal with Bristol itself, which is Bristol City Council. Um, <clears throat> Bristol is actually split into three local authorities. Um, so, but it's quite a big, a big area, but we also look after. Um, um, quite a rural area as well so um, it depends on kind of what you what your your bag is if you want kind of like inner city kind of multicultural kind of schools then great but if you want to kind of like be a little, little more leafy suburbs then we've got those options as well um, I'm very fortunate because the team that I work with here we've worked with each other for years so a lot of the schools um, that we um, work with we've got a really long standard relationship with I've got some teachers that work with me now that I've worked with for ever since I've been doing the job 19 years that have kind of followed me where to where I've gone and like you know they're, they're fantastic so there's a good team of people that are here that have been doing the role for a long time that we could also introduce you to um, just so you can kind of get their take on it from ground level as well um, so yeah so plenty plenty of work available plenty of options available plenty of people that can give you advice about locations places to go so I'm yeah. a big fan of the southwest and I will keep banging <laughs> on about it it's much better than London yeah I hundred no, percent. You, you hit the nail on the head there in terms of like mm. in the southwest of England, but specifically mm. in terms of like, you know, life experience moving overseas too. like a lot of the things which you could experience, you know, from the life experience, the career development, mm. the personal growth, you can really get a lot of that in the southwest of England too, which is mm. great. So, you know, yeah. travel, Bex has already, uh, Becky's already touched on um, the community mm. friends you'll make over there as well. The guys in the office uh, are absolutely great too. And they're a close knit bunch too, which is good. And you'll get mm. to see that when you hopefully end up in the office one day. Um, and then stepping out of your comfort zone as well, like, you know, doing something which maybe your friends haven't done before people you haven't um you know that haven't done before too is a really good opportunity and um yeah experience living in a different country a different part of england which is great and then on the career development front too um you know having worked in education recruitment with ANZ UK for the, 
five years now, the amount of educators which go and teach over in the UK, and even if Korea isn't the biggest driver while you're looking to make the move, you can really take some massive forward steps in your career as well from leadership opportunities that are a lot more readily available in the UK schools. And, you know, even just getting a head teacher from a term contract at a school, your employability on the flip side back in Australia or New Zealand is um, has held in really high regard the English curriculum. So, and because of the amount of work available in the Southwest specifically, you'll be able to hopefully yeah, really develop yourself as a teacher and as, as an educator as well. And just great PD. Like I learned a lot teaching in UK classrooms. Um, very different than English kids. Um, the curriculum is mm -hmm. very similar, but um, and very adaptable as well. Like everyone who's mm -hmm. um, taught in England, I'm sorry, everyone who's taught in Australia and New Zealand will really find the transition over um, quite seamless. And um, yeah, we offer lots of support through that process as well. So um, yeah. we just want to ask another question, guys, before we continue to move through the slides. Um, when is everyone looking to go obviously so we've sort of got a good idea of um who everyone is where everyone's from um we really can and everyone's been to the uk but when's everyone actually looking to jump on the big tin bird um feel free to great amazing so we'll talk on the academic year as well over in the UK too, because um, everyone may or may not be aware it's quite different. Um, so we'll make sure we spend a little bit of time on that slide too, just to touch on um, all this. But it looks like 2023 is the year, which is good. So um, we can, yeah, obviously talk through those steps to get you set up for 2023, which is great. So essentially, um, this is a snapshot of what to expect. Um, so we'll touch on, um, you know, the ins and outs of this um, in more detail as we go through the webinar. But essentially what we'd look to do is after the call, um, I don't think I've actually... Um, I'm so sorry if we have or not. I've looked at everyone's name. I think um, Madison would be the only educator I believe I've spoke with. Um, apologies if I've missed one there. Um, but essentially what we look to do is have an initial contact with someone from our global opportunities team based here in Australia or New Zealand down under. And then following on from that, once we've got um, a CV from yourself, um, a photo um, and just your interest to move and when it's within a 12 month window um, from when you want to arrive, Becky and the crew in Bristol or other parts of England, if you decide that you want to you know, live elsewhere, that, that's fine. We can talk about our other office locations too um, but obviously the southwest team will look to connect with you and they'll um, yeah reach out and talk about all things happening in the UK and then really start the process with assisting with the journey where to live um, work um, you know tips and tricks the, the, the Becky and the team have put together a really good um, guide which we'll share with everyone in the coming weeks on um, living in the southwest of England so talking like a Bristolian, um, pubs, restaurants, cool trips, which we'll talk about. So lots of the good stuff and obviously the important stuff around work as well. When you get two months before you get to the UK, our compliance team reach out. The compliance team assist in getting you cleared to work. So to work in UK schools or any schools in that matter, you need to have lots of checks to make sure that you're good to go. References, police checks, proof of addresses, et cetera. So we, walk, we work through that with you um, closer to the date. And then we look to do an online virtual registration. So before you get to the UK, Okay. And before you arrive in Bristol Airport or London Airport, wherever it is that you first fly into, um, we'll hope that you are ready to work the next day. Even if you don't want to work for another two months, we want to make sure that everything's done before you get to the UK. And we do that during a virtual registration. So you're cleared to work, step five. And then, yeah, come step six is in the classroom. So there's a lot more that goes into these six steps, but we tried to break it down for everyone nice and simply. Um, but the journey for everyone, mostly on the call, will be step, step one. And then we step you through all the way in, into, yeah, the Bristol office, meet the team, um, come in for a coffee, a catch up, and then, yeah, get you into the classroom whenever you're ready to jump into it. So um, and it looks like that will probably be in 2023, mostly for everyone, which is great. And if absolutely flies time, as we know. So before you know it, you'll have that first call and uh, you'll do the visa, which we'll talk about you'll book your flights as well, which is great. And then, um, yeah, it all gets really exciting from there, um, which is good. So um, we've got this slide too as well. And this is a good opportunity for me to share the link to our Facebook group as well. So you'll hear the word community a lot during our call, or at least we hope we will say it a, a lot, um, but it's definitely something which um, we really do um, hold in massively high regard at ANZ UK. So we um, really want to make sure everyone feels a part of an educated community. So before you go to the UK in Australia or New Zealand, we'll welcome you into our office or to a pub for an event, whether it be an info session or an um, just a social, just to meet other people. Because, um, you know, we haven't asked the question, but um, oh, we probably could ask the question now, to be honest, just ad hocly. Uh, is everyone going to the UK traveling solo or traveling in a group or with a partner? As, um, I'll, yeah, just want to, if everyone's supposed to post into the chat, whether you're solo, um, partner or um, group of friends, whatever it is as well. Um, 
nice. A bit of a mix there, which is good. So um, I personally went over my partner and a heap of our mates journeyed over with us too. But um, the good thing with that is that even if you are by yourself, you can see you're in the photo, you'll meet other people too. Um, we're obviously um, one avenue to meet people. Um, there's lots of other ways, which we'll talk about too, but great opportunity to connect with other people who are like-minded doing a very similar thing as well. And yeah, journey over to the UK. Um, the Facebook group is a really good way to do that. So feel free to jump into the group. We'll post updates in there on events, socials, you name it. We'll try and post it in there, but use the group as a networking opportunity so if you um yeah traveling solo or you just want to meet other people post it hey i'm from melbourne let's catch up for a drink we've had oodles of people make lifelong friends from that facebook group and other ones which have set up similarly before so um lots of people in this group have traveled solo met mates uh, met partners um you name it it's happened <laughs> so um definitely feel free to um yeah join in as much as possible and like we said located in office locations across the uk so we're talking about bristol but we do have offices in london surrey and then over in wales as well so um yeah if for whatever reason even if you do your six months or nine months or 12 months in bristol you can jet set over to a different office as well pretty easily with ANZ uk so um but yeah we'll, we'll keep on moving through guys but thank you for that and definitely feel free to join the facebook group Sorry, <laughs> apologies. So we've got to cut to a uh, testimonial. Um, so hopefully everyone can hear this. Oh, hopefully the audio works well. Um, just to talk about, um, do you remember Lauren? Becky, you're very good. I can put you yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read, I read, I registered Lauren. Amazing. Yeah, so bless her. Lauren came over just before COVID yep. had happened, and um, yeah, she's she's a little superstar, and we're still in touch with her now. So yep. we placed, we got her a contract in school, and um, she's still there now, and still in touch with her. And yes, yeah, she was just lovely, a breath of fresh air, but not the best time to arrive, bless her. So we kind of worked with her and looked after her quite a lot. Yeah, that's it. So I'm um, happy to show this little quick little uh, testimonial yep. if we like. Um, hopefully the audio works, everyone. Just to give um straight from the horse's mouth, if you would, from someone who's moved over to, mm -hmm. to Bristol. Yep. I can't hear it. You can't hear it? Oh, bugger. Hmm. Bugger. Sorry, sorry. I, I can hear it. And I had this sneaky feeling uh... that no one else could. Um, what we'll do is I'll try and download this and post this into the chat as we go. So um, yep. what Lauren's words won't be gone and forgotten. I'll try my best as we're going to uh, mm -hmm. multitask and um, to get that posted into the uh, chat so I can watch it. So apologies, guys. Uh, but it was uh, singing the praises of Becky and the team. I can attest to that. So um, mm -hmm. awesome. But we'll keep on moving through because that didn't work. I'm so sorry. Um, so this mm -hmm. is just um, a testimonial from uh, Tyron as well. This isn't Tyron in the photo too. So everyone knows Tyron. Um, I couldn't mm -hmm. find, we couldn't find a photo of her, but uh, Becky, do you want to talk a little bit about Torrin and her time in the UK? Do you remember Torrin? Yeah, so yeah, Torrin is another person that we're still in touch with and we're, we've placed um, into a, a longer term role now. Um, but Torrin went to my colleague, Laura, and was um, a support member of staff rather than a teacher. And so um, the, the one, the one thing that hopefully you'll find with us especially kind of the Bristol office we've been doing the job for a long time and we just kind of want you guys to feel like you're part of the team as well and you're part of the journey of kind of setting up and launching ANZ UK you know across the UK outside of London and so Torin um, came over and registered with us and we got it's a him um, and we got him a job um, really quickly in the school so he, he did supply for us a little while uh, for a little while again came over at a time where there's a lot of uncertainty with COVID and things like that so we we did kind of regular information sets um, sessions and webinars and training so when schools were closed for a little while we put on quite a lot of training for, for, for our educators and so um, Torren was just is a little superstar and he's, he's all constantly in touch with Laura all the time and we've got quite a lot of people if you if you um, go online and if you go into um, if you google ANZ UK Bristol um, you'll see quite a lot of um, reviews that have been put on um, our google reviews um, so there's quite a few overseas people that have kind of put some reviews on there as well. Um, we've got quite a lot. We've got people that have done kind of written testimonials and bits and pieces with us. But the, the kind of main point is not just kind of go, oh, aren't we amazing? It's not a case of that. It's just because you'll get a bit of a feel for people's experiences and kind of what's good, what's, what, they, what to look out for, that kind of thing. And so, yeah, we've... We, we, pretty much everybody that we've had previously that's come over from the overseas pipeline have done so well and because it's quite a new thing um, in the southwest for people to come over from Australia New Zealand and have a company that offers this to the schools um, the schools are really really receptive and they're really really excited about it and it just kind of puts you on a um, 
kind of give you a bit of an upper hand if you want for a better want of a better word um and it's just really exciting for us as well so um we what we've done quite a lot of time is people that have previously made the journeys when you come over here we can kind of put you in touch with people that have done similar things we've got we've got one we've got a group of canadians actually that are like a part of like a board game crew now so they kind of yeah. go around to each other's houses and play like board games and stuff like that so just i know quite a few of you have said that you you will be traveling solo but the, there's there's lots and lots of people we can put you in touch with so it can be intimidating i think you're really brave i think it's amazing um but there's lots and lots of people we can put you in touch with and so in Tyron will be one of them because he's, he's as good as gold bless him yeah definitely and it's um i can really attest to that mm. having um when i was working in the uk um not wasn't specifically working in the out of mm. the Bristol office i was working out of our london office and my experience working with schools is that australian and new zealand and overseas trained teachers are held in really high regard in the uk so it's um definitely something which like as becky said um and i really want to test that schools um gravitate mm. to work towards in, work um gravitate towards walk working oh my god with mm. in the uk um mm to the nature of the educators that come over and partner with us for work such as everyone on this call so um yeah you'll find it um yeah great when you get there um it's great mm -hmm. teaching english kids it's very different um like i said but mm -hmm. um yeah you, you you'll fit straight in and the schools um are really receptive to someone who's new to the uk and they usually or not usually the same the vast majority mm -hmm. of times so will put additional support in place just so you can get that um time to adapt to the new curriculum as well so um we'll talk about um a little bit into detail now which is good in terms of like living in the southwest of england too so some of the options um, that we've got on the um, on the screen, but um, as we're going for, again for any multitaskers, feel free to multitask. Um, I've just posted into the chat our blog page, um, which goes into a lot more detail. Um, the first one you'll see on the blog page um, will have London. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the rest of the UK, and there's a Bristol and Southwest England guide within there as well. So bookmark this blog. There's oodles of stuff on the blog page, but um, we'll, we'll talk through these specifics in a bit more detail um, before you jump into it, Bex. I know you'd be best placed to mm. talk about this bristol is such a cool place um when i went over and i lived in the uk my partner and i we did live in london the whole time I, I'll, I'll admit it i can't say that we did live in bristol but every single time we went there we always said like this is a place if we'll ever live anywhere else mm. we'd pick here it's really cool um you know it's got like a like beck said it's got um you know a small um feel to it but it's got a lot going on as well so within 20 minutes you're you're literally in the countryside you're in bath in 30 minutes which is a beautiful part of um the uk as well with lots of history um there too and lots of art culture nightlife available in um in mm. bristol it's Got a lot going on it's a good central hub but if you want a bit more of that out of field there's lots of opportunities available on the outskirts as well or in some of the different towns and cities that we'll touch on too and yeah plenty of good trips as well which we'll talk through we if you want to base yourself in bristol um mm -hmm. we'll yeah we'll work through that i'm getting too excited here um becky you, you, you <laughs> tell the guys about this <laughs> i'm not going to be much better yeah <laughs> So, so Bristol specifically, that's where our office is based and we're just kind of on the outskirts of Bristol, actually. But um, Bristol as a, as a city itself, um, it's it's quite boho. So it's quite artsy, cultural kind of city. It's It always wins awards for like best places in the UK to live. Um, it's kind of won awards for like best European city. And it's a, it's a very, very cultural place. It's um, There's lots and lots of um, street art around as well. So you'll see quite a lot of like really big, like funky graffiti everywhere um obviously it's the home of Banksy um and so um we did a little thing uh, recently which we'll be sharing with you guys I know because we're going to put it online it's like a bit of a meet the team thing and so you kind of get to know who all we all are and I think I think I've asked everybody what's your favorite thing about Bristol and literally everybody said food <laughs> so um there's there is quite a big food scene here so one of my favorite places is a place called Wapping Wharf which is kind of central in Bristol and it's loads of old shipping containers that have been turned into like little pop-up restaurants so they're all quite small Small, but it's really really funky and so um there's quite a big like food scene here so, as in food markets um and so you can kind of get pretty much anything and everything and so i really i you can kind of go like really low end kind of like you know just street foody kind of stuff and there's also a lot of um, very expensive michelin starred restaurants which i've kind of done a bit of both um so my husband is very very foody um so yes yeah, so there's a really kind of big mix but like i mentioned before there's just there's always events on there's always festivals on there's always um there's concerts they're building a massive arena here at the moment which has been talked about for quite a few a few years it's also quite a sporty city so um like rugby football um athletics all that kind of stuff there's quite a lot of that here um but i just you know as as a city itself it's very green lots and lots of green spaces um uh, there's 
uh, it's very historical. You may well have seen on the news, rightly or wrongly, good or bad, about when there was the, the um, Black Lives Matter um, protest a little while ago and there's the, the toppling of the statue. So obviously that was in Bristol and it's, it's got a very, very... Um, a very like deep history because obviously it's a port city and so um some of the architecture here is absolutely beautiful because it's part of the old um, merchants houses so um you've got an area called clifton which is a big appeal for everyone and that's where you get the big clifton suspension bridge if you ever see anything in bristol you'll see the clifton suspension bridge so it's so it's it's a beautiful beautiful place to be and it's the kind of main biggest city within the southwest so it's a really good kind of like central place um it's not the cheapest place to live i'll be honest with you it's not the cheapest place but if you're slightly further out you will get more for your money if you want to be in Clifton you're going to pay the price tag for it um, but if you want to be a bit further out um, um, we've got a lady called in our office called Imogen who's recently started working with us and she's moved from another area of the UK and she's done a, um, an information guide about how to find somewhere to live and different sites and how to meet people if you wanted to do a house share because she's just done the same thing so she's moved into a house share where she's done like a buddy up scheme where she buddies up with people that are similar back backgrounds to her and then she moves in which is really good so it's really interesting learning all about that um uh, public transport here there isn't a metro or um like underground here per se because it's such an old city and there's ri rivers running all underneath it um but there's lots and lots of buses there's lots of trains like i said there's the airport close by if you wanted to get out um so that side of things are absolutely fine you don't really need to drive in bristol um so there's plenty of public transport there's lots of the the voice scooters as well which lots of people are using now and the boris bikes as we call them so the electric bikes that you can use um so getting around is fine if you kind of want to go a bit further out of the city so if you wanted to go kind of like further down into the southwest into the more rural areas we would always recommend that you drive just because you will have more options and you will be able to get around a lot better but it's not end of the world we can figure that out um kind of going on to just other areas like a little bit around it so we do cover quite a big broad area from here so i live right bang between bristol and bath bath is obviously world heritage site breathtakingly beautiful quite touristy um, but breathtakingly beautiful got lots of boutique -y kind of little places um again lots of restaurants all that kind of lovely stuff it's quite small um so um rental costs there's a lot of um uh um uh, massive houses that have been turned into flats and things over there so it is slightly more expensive than Bristol but again depending on where you go it's, it's kind of like for like really so it's not too bad um you like I said meal range you can go you can go out for a meal and you can get you can you get a, a decent meal for 10 pounds do you know what I mean or you can go somewhere that's super fancy and then you could literally just be hemorrhaging the cash on wine so it depends on what's your bag um so yeah so kind of coming a little bit further out of Bristol then we kind of um we call it the M5 corridor so it's from so from Bristol you there's the M5 that goes down all the way down into Cornwall and then you've got the M4 which goes from South Wales all the way across to London so transport wise and getting around wise that's it's really good because you, you can kind of get in and out very very easily so if you go down the M5 as you're getting down towards the coastal areas and um, there's lots of towns um, based along that line there's um, a huge um, nuclear power plant in um, Somerset um, which is ah oh, thank you which is kind of of, um, <laughs> no, that's fine. So where Western Supermare is, keep on going down a little bit further down there. There's a big nuclear plant which employs thousands and thousands of people. So quite a lot of people are moving down into Somerset because of this, um, because the work opportunities that are there. So we call it so um, straight down to the so areas that we cover. We go down as far as Exeter. Um, we've got Minehead, which are always looking for people to work. So that's up on the coast. Um, so um, that's kind of like a really, really big hub of where our area is. You've got Glastonbury. So if anyone wants to go to the festival, if you live in Glastonbury, you're given free tickets. Um, so you've obviously got Glast Glastonbury, which is happening this year. And I've got lots of friends that are going to that. I'm a yep. bit too old for that Same. now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So we've got, um, so yes, yeah, so, and kind of going all across into kind of like Dorset, we do bits and pieces and then going up, like I said, on the M4 corridor all the way across the m4 so into swindon wiltshire bath um, and then going up into gloucestershire and cheltenham as well i went to university in cheltenham again a very very beautiful area um so it's, it's a big old area that we we work with so it just depends on kind of what's your bag we've got a couple of people that are coming over in the pipeline for september this year that are going to be based in cheltenham so again cheltenham is, is kind of north of bristol so that's it just a bit further up from there ty so yeah so again we work with schools in that area so it's a big it's a it's a big old um patch that we look after so if countryside 
you think great if city life you think then there's also quite some quite big towns and cities there for me I I come from a little market town so I wanted something that wasn't too massive too overwhelming and so Bristol was just perfect for me so I can I, I get a bit of best best of both worlds yeah. um so and the type yeah. of work available Becky too like in terms mm. of um you know whether it's contract temporary work uh primary mm. secondary schools as well like across the different cities it's, it's quite a good mix isn't it so in terms of like yeah. just letting us know like what your ideal role is the type of work yeah. that you want available and we'll um we'll touch on a few of that we towards the the back end, we might have to quickly touch on a few slides um, so we're going to yep. probably have to move through a few slides quickly and not because yep. they're not important and we'll share the slide pack of everyone uh, but yep. just want to make sure we don't keep everyone for too Timing. much longer but yeah yep. um, in terms of work available it's a pretty good mix across the different cities yep. is that right? Yeah, yeah, we, we work with quite a few big multi academy trusts as well. Um, in in the so so we, we kind of cover like from early years teacher assistant work, primary, secondary. Um, at the moment we've got a really really good broad mix. We've got two consultants here that specialise in the special needs sector as well. So it's a really really broad mix. So depending on whether people want short or long term, so we can offer people just day to day if you want in that flexibility. It's not for everybody. Some people might want actually I want to know where I am. I don't want to be going here there and everywhere all the time. So we can offer that as well. Well, so it, it, whatever your option is we're kind of covering the whole spectrum at the moment yeah definitely and it's good to know that as well so like um we said yeah. just keep us in the loop what your preferences are and the biggest mm -hmm. thing about us at ANZ UK is working towards your ideal role and if that's purely yeah. doing casual work amazing um hopefully you know you consider a contract down the line but if you don't we still want to support you throughout your journey um and if you yeah. want a contract before you get to the UK and we'll touch on that you can have that we can assist in having that organized via a Skype interview before you get to the UK or it might be when yep. you first get there as well so plenty of different yep. options too so um um, we've sort of touched on the locations as well, which is great. So yeah. um, obviously, like um, Becky mentioned, the further out um, you get from Bristol and Bath, like sort of the cheaper it gets. And the same is with London, mm -hmm. the same is in Melbourne, um, New Zealand, Auckland, wherever we are. Uh, we all know that's sort of the case. So and, and that's pretty mm -hmm. similar over in the UK too. Um, cool. So some of the best trips as well. So um, the, when I um, was on the way home in 2020, my partner and I had done a four week road trip and I will share a blog, which I'd recently put together as well about this too. So feel free to um, have a read through this and get a bit more of a detail. But if you're living in the Southwest, there's so much, you may not have never heard of Cornwall, the Jurassic Coast, the Cotswolds, Devon, but make sure you remember those names because there's unbelievable spots everywhere. So we've already spoken about Bath. Um, it's a really cool city. Um, you'll see a lot there, which is great. Um, Porth Corner is in Cornwall. You actually feel like you're in Southern France, almost where Becky was in Bordeaux mm. um, when you went down the, the coast of Cornwall. You sort of pinch yourself because you don't actually think you're in England. But you are, mm. as long as you get good weather, um, which isn't always the case in England. Uh, <laughs> the Cotswolds is a stone fall away. Every single town in the Cotswolds is beautiful in its own right. Um, and you mm. absolutely love just driving a car or getting a bus, wherever you want to get around there. Um, again, stone throw away. And then Dirtle Door and the Jurassic Coast as well. And this is just to highlight a few. Um, really, really beautiful part of the world. Coastal place. Um, lots of good spots along that Jurassic Coast. But Dirtle Door in particular. Um, yeah, you could literally spend the afternoon there relaxing, enjoying the sun, sunshine if you've got it or um yeah just a beautiful scenery too so some some good trips there as well um the blogs uh, hopefully a nice read um let us know if everybody enjoys it um but there's some really good tips in there too so um yeah lots to do when you're when you're basing yourself um not just in the southwest just in england as a whole um there's there's, there's a lot you can get up to um we'll keep moving through as well because i know um we've got 15 minutes to go we promise we'll try not to roll too far over um but if we're a little bit tardy becky and i we apologize in advance so um mm -hmm. In terms of the um, opportunities available in the UK, so um, we can support from early childhood all the way up to key stage five um, in the UK. The UK break up their, um, their curriculum and year groups into key stages. Um, so just familiarise yourself with that when you move over to the UK. That's not, this isn't Southwest England specific. This is the, the entirety of England. Wales is very similar, but has a, a couple of little nuances to it, but very much similar to this. Um, the types of schools. Um, so if, you're, if you'd love working in mainstream schools in the private sector, Catholic, independent, whatever it is, just let us know and we'll gravitate towards getting your opportunity in that space. If you feel as if you want to work in special educational needs schools, schools that have a bit more of a mixed demographic and maybe more challenging on the behaviour front, then that's obviously what we want to support with work mm -hmm. as well. Um, Becky will attest we work with the broad spectrum of schools in the UK. Um, schools um, are different depending upon where you'll be teaching. So um, yeah, just keep us in the loop if you're loving where you're teaching. If you're going back to school regularly and you're liking it, just let us know. That's great. Um, hopefully that's a school you can work at really consistently, whether it's casual or a contract work as well. 
And the pupil referral units too is another type of work which isn't really available too much in Australia and New Zealand because they, these schools specifically cater for students with challenging behaviour and have been excluded from mainstream settings. So I personally taught at a preschool for about nine months, similar to special educational needs schools um, in the sense that they're smaller class sizes, one to six students, usually a TA in the classroom, can be, I guess, challenging places to teach, but really rewarding as well. So if you want to try work in that space, there's lots and lots of opportunities available with specialists work in alternative learning provision so even if you've never tried it you may not have even heard of it before um give it a go when you're there if you love it great if you do one day and you don't like it just let becky and the team know and then we'll, we'll get your work elsewhere as well so um just keep an open mind to that too um and there's lots of different types of schools in the uk which we won't have time to touch on now but um in the follow-up calls we can answer any questions you have about what sort of schools are available and what sort of work is there too for support staff on the call as well um in the UK, you don't need a specific qualification, nor necessarily experience working within a school. Um, a lot of it's about obviously adaptability, flexibility. It is uh, ideally that you did have, you know, a form of coaching or youth related work experience, but you don't need to have that. So if you're coming over the partner or a friend who fits that mold, lots of work available from teaching assistant to being an unqualified teacher to being a groundskeeper, to being a science tech, um, you name it, UK schools need it. Um, even if it's administration work at the front desk, um, there's, there's lots and lots of work available, um, not just in that teaching space. So yeah, keep an eye out for anyone you know in your network um, who might fit that mold um, and we'll be happy to help them. And that can be in Australia or they could already be in the UK, wherever it is the two. Um, so Becky, you've already touched on like the locations and this, the type of work available. And I know there's a lot of words on this slide, guys. Apologies, we'll share the slide tax. I don't think you need to read every word. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to give you a quick little overview of what sort of work is available for everyone on the call when they get there? Yeah, so like I mentioned before, it, we we kind of work around you. Um, a lot of the time with schools, like you would get weird and wonderful requests, um, but we will work around you and what, what what's going to kind of make you tick with your longer term plans for when you're here. Um, quite a lot of the overseas people that we've worked with previously um, want to have that flexibility and do the the more of the day-to-day -day side of things so they can you can go and travel and you can do more things while you're here um equally we've also had quite a few people that um have gone in to do longer term roles in a school so basically they're there for a set period of time but with the agreement that they can still have certain time out to go and do travels and long weekends and bits and pieces so there are there are options there um it really it really does depend on the individual we have like day-to-day -day side of things we could get you 10 days a week if there's 10 days in a week um so there's there's loads and loads of options whether you're support staff or whether you're a teacher there's plenty of work so you'll never be sat around twiddling your thumbs so that's not a problem long-term roles that can be you know the school it could be something like some they want somebody for a month or it could be you know somebody's just gone skiing they've broken their legs so we need cover for two months or we've got somebody that's resigned and we need to cover somebody for the interim or all that kind of lovely stuff um um, I've just seen a question that's come through a second ago about um, leadership roles. Yes, we can get leadership roles. Um, we, I've, I've worked with quite a few senior leaders and placed people into senior leadership positions before. There are those options there. Um, you will probably need to go through a bit more of a more um, vigorous um, uh, interview process for it because obviously they're going to want to make sure that your background and your qualifications are going to be equivalent to what they're needing we have got a chat that we're working with at the moment actually that is proven to be a little bit of a problem because he his background is um, PE and so he's worked he's got British passport but he's been in Australia for many many years and he's wanted to come back into a senior leadership position but because of his kind of like background subject um, that's proved to be a bit more of a challenge um, um, but there is absolutely options there. So we'd probably work, want to work a bit closer with, with individuals like yourself to, to really make sure we've got your profile and um, all of your skills. Um, so it's really, really evident for school when we're presenting you to them um, to kind of get you in front of the right people because we might, not, might well need to speak to governors and people like that. But absolutely, you can come find really leadership roles, people who've done it regularly before. Yeah, there so might even be um, when you've got there as well, like um, Julia too, like whether it's secure before you get there, maybe in a school that you might have just a general classroom teaching position that you could step up into yep. a leadership position once yep. there too so there's different pathways if it's not when you first get yeah, there definitely lots yeah. of opportunities once you're on the ground in the uk when the school yeah. can see you teach and it's evident for them that you fit that mold of a leader within mm. the school so um but yeah lots of opportunities for that in the uk too lots of my good friends yeah. have um, followed that pathway and the heads of and one yep. of my good mates is a head of geography at a school in the uk now mm. um came over as a grad seven years ago and he, he's still ticking on um so um yeah oodles of opportunities there and i think yeah. the, 
the pathway for this as well, like, you know, you can sort of see progressively, like you could start doing daily supply work. If you get a long-term supply contract out of school, teaching English or whatever it is, primary, that we mm. hope that would lead to a permanent contract out of school at the end of the day. That means you're working directly with the school no mm. longer with ANZ UK, but still a part of the ANZ UK community as well. So um, yeah, each of those different options might suit yourself. You might jump out and go, oh, you know, mm. I'd love a permanent contract. And that's what we want to work towards too. So, and the, um, mm. the, we have a ready to work app too. So if you wanted to do purely casual work, you want to travel, you want to go to saint Emilion and Bordeaux and Madrid, like Becky has over the past couple of mm. weekends, um, you can just block yourself out on ready to work. Mm. Um, and Becky and the team know you're away. Um, we want to know how your travels went and stuff like that, but you simply, you don't even need to tell us. You can just block yourself out if you're doing casual work if you're going away and you're in a long-term position we need to, need to know about that but um and, and the school too but yeah really mm. flexible if you're doing casual work and it's, it's set up pretty well for us to be able to assist you in that space so um we'll keep moving through just i know we've got a, a few more slides to get through um we've got a, a few good slides as well we want to make sure we spend as much time we can on um so i might just quickly take this one uh becky just to, to run mm. through it so in terms of um contracts available before you get to the uk so we can guarantee work in the uk for up to five days a week. Becky said 10, so if we can get to 10, we'll do that, but five <laughs> is probably the most we could do. So um, if you sign on to that before you get to the UK, you're eligible for up to 250 pounds um, off your flights. And if you sign on to a long-term position before you get to the UK, it's up to 500 pounds off your flights as well. And that's after you've worked one term within that um, contract. So 60 days, essentially. Um, we'll talk about the visa reimbursement, which is available too, um, uh, to, to yourself if you sign on to either of those contracts. And we'll talk about a visa support team. And I promise we'll talk about visas as well in the next two slides. Um, we won't touch on this too much, POAE or umbrella, just purely from a time perspective. Um, but we do offer both forms of payment. The, the Brits, I'm sorry, Becky, have done an amazing job of complicating the way you get paid comparatively to Australia or New Zealand. Um, so so umbrella companies and POAE, you may not have heard of either. We offer both, but just to give you that oversight that we'll talk you through each of those options through your journey, there can be some benefits you get from through going through an umbrella company with ANZ UK and you get to claim back on your flights and there's some extra relocation bonuses available too. So we'll talk you through that, um, but just so you're aware that some of the daily rates you might see online or whatever like that um, may be a POAE or umbrella rate too. So the biggest thing is how your national insurance comes out of your pay um, and your pay slip will look a little bit different, but it doesn't affect the work you get and the schools you go into at all um so yeah um question um so uh, kirsten what bank is ANZ uk linked with um answer later i'll call it lovely we will touch on that in a little bit we do have a couple partnerships that we have with some banks that we can get you set up with too and i'll, I'll share a blog as well that we've got um finally on the bonuses um if anyone in anyone's network um has or anyone on the call knows anyone looking for support over in the uk or even in victoria or australia too we do offer reloc uh, referral bonuses um we wouldn't want the a financial incentive to be why you would refer someone on to ANZ UK. But if you were to do it and they work 10 days, you do get an incentive too. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, but we hope you'd refer someone on anyhow, um, just because hopefully we're doing a good job in supporting you. Um, but just keep that in mind for, for the journey over. Um, cool. So Becky, we've got um, probably about six slides to go, probably about seven minutes. So we might go to about... Um, mm -hmm five minutes over guys so we'll probably go through these slides relatively quickly but it's not because they're not important it's just because becky and i got excited on the first few slides so um <laughs> how do people find somewhere to live becky if they're um if they're moving over so again we've got um we've got quite a lot of information that we can give to you offline for this um so like i said mentioned before my colleague imogen she's recently done done the same thing she's come into the area and she's needed to find some we've helped quite a lot of people that have come over so um so this information that the, there are there's multiple ways that you could um try and find somewhere to live so again if you wanted to just do room share you wanted to do flats and all that kind of stuff um we can kind of we can help you with that and we can start giving you advice on uh, like locations areas uh facebook groups all that kind of stuff um i've already kind of mentioned that i getting around and stuff anyway but we've got lots of information that we can send across to you for this is there anything anybody specifically wants to know about this so i don't start bleating on and boring you all to tears is that if anyone's got any specific questions if you're wanting any specific information about how to find anywhere to live or um if that's kind of something because otherwise i could i'll I think we've kind of already covered go through. this. Yeah, the biggest tip yeah. I would personally give moving over to the UK and mm. myself is short-term accommodation first. So find yourself an Airbnb, yeah. a sublet, um, a hostel, yeah. whatever it is for the first week or two, 
yeah. three, four, whatever it is. When you're there, long term after that mm. as well, sign on to a six or 12 month lease too. So short term off yeah. the back. And then when you get there, sign off for something longer once you're there as well. Yeah. So that way you know the area well. There's lots of cool places, but you might find your vibe a different part of the city and you don't want to sign on to a 12 month mm. lease. So you're living somewhere where you might not want yeah. to leave. So um, try before yeah. you buy with that. Always um, recommend that. 100%. Um, we will touch on this one briefly. Uh, Kirsten, um, this answers your question. So we've got um, a couple of different bank options that we have partnerships with HSBC is a big bank which you can sign up with um, and then there's also Monzo as well there's also another one called Revolut too which is quite common um, those are the three banks which we generally recommend there's oodles of options to do um, to sign up with do it when you get there is the best recommendation because it's um, some banks they can let you do it before you get there but you don't need to because you can't get paid until you get to the UK so like don't worry if you don't get mm. a bank account before you get there um, mm. mobile phone again you can set it up when you get there there's so many options gift gap and three mobile are really good um, usually you can do like what's called like a feel at home. So if you do go on a trip to Greece, Berlin, wherever, um, you can usually just land and then your phone will work. Um, but yeah, again, UK SIM card, worry about that when you get there. Um, national insurance, um, you need to apply for that again when you get to the UK. It's essentially for all the Aussies on the call, a tax file number. It's pretty much the equivalent of that. Um, and again, you can apply that when you get to the UK. The NHS, um, it's the essentially, again, sorry for the Kiwis um, on the line, um, apologies. Um, it's essentially our version of Medicare. Um, so it's free healthcare, which you get um, access to once you move to the UK and you've got your right to work through a youth mobility visa, passport, et cetera. Um, the NHS is great. So if you need to go to the doctors, you just got to like register for a local GP, sign yourself up, and then you can go there and get free healthcare. So it's a really good service. So you don't need to get private health insurance mm. when you're in the UK. You can just go through the NHS, which is different mm. to here in Australia too, where it's recommended to get private health. Um, international funds. So everyone have a think on the call, what, how are you going to access your Australian or New Zealand funds when you get to the UK? So making sure you've got um, an international travel card that you can go to um, a pub, the restaurant, rock up to Bristol Airport and book a ticket at the at the terminal if you want to do that. Um, but you need to make sure you can access your funds too. So you get paid into a UK bank account, but ING and Citibank is how you can travel with your saved up Australian dollars as well or New Zealand dollars. When you get to the UK, you can use foreign exchange if you need to send money to and fro your bank accounts as well. This blog that I posted has um, everything within there. So feel free to read through that as well. Um, we'll keep moving through just from a time perspective. And Sophie, great question. Um, there's no costs um, for working with ANZ UK. So there's no sort of hidden fee in your pay or um, any sort of on cost at the end of the day. So we've got an agreement with our schools where we'll sort of charge a school a set rate um, and then we'll obviously pay an educator a set rate too. So that's how we'll sort of operate as a business. Um, um, there's no sort of hidden fees in your pay. Whatever pay you get, it's um, what you receive. And it's our agreement with our, the schools that we have our partner relationships with. That's how we sort of operate and um, assist everyone for work in the UK and also across the globe too. So a great question, Sophie. Um, Bex, you want to give us a, just a quick overview of some of the sporting clubs as well? I know you've been doing a bit of work on this recently, which is good. Um, yeah, so I can... I can any, if anybody's got any specific interests and anything you want to get involved in, let me know and I'll find it out for you. Um, the top one on there is netball because I play netball. Um, and so I'm always yeah. kind of like bleating on about that. But there's, um, the, again, I mentioned before, Bristol is a very, very sporty city. Um, the Southwest, the UK very much is anyway. The, you know, after um, Olympics 2012, there's been a lot of money pumped into sport over here at the moment. So there's lots of, there's, I've only literally put a few things on there now, but there's lots of like athletics clubs, cycle clubs, cricket clubs clubs um there's all sorts of bits and pieces so if you're wanting to have anything um or wanting to have any information about anything specific then i can get it for you but there's, there's loads and loads of stuff in and around like i've mentioned before the the clifton downs if you like it's a huge huge big green space in bristol um so there's lots of sporting events that are being are held up there all the time so athletics clubs football clubs um i think it's rugby up there as well so yeah so if anybody's wanting anything specific i can find it for you amazing i mean also travel so if you're booking a trip um um, make sure you just um, double check if any of those providers um, you want to book through. Travel Talk, um, Kentucky, us about top tech, they're great, get 10% off. Travel Talk to amazing tours to Morocco and Egypt. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to travel, check out these websites mm -hmm. and you can use a promo code that we can give you. Um, whilst I'm going through these next couple of slides, which will um, power through again, not to go through, they're not important, but we'll just go through them quickly. Um, everyone just want to post into the chat um, where in the UK you would like to live. I forgot to do this poll earlier, apologies. Um, but hopefully everyone has a bit of an understanding of where in the Southwest they may want to live. Um, so feel free to yeah, post into the chat 
as we continue to move on through to the last couple of slides of the webinar. We've probably got about five slides to go, guys, and I'll, we'll, we'll mm -hmm. quickly smash through them as well. So um, a few Bristol there, Becky, which is good. So I'm sure you, the, you yourself and the team will be happy for that. And Vicky, mm -hmm. not, not, don't care where, which is 100% fine. I'm, I'm sure you'll love mm -hmm. her if you end up. Um, and amazing. Um, I'll keep on going through the slides, guys, just so we can um, yeah, just finish um, relatively close on time. So we'll need to go through compliance with you as well. Um, so we'll share with this with you closer to your journey, but we'll need to get your academic transcripts um, and cite them online via an equal. Um, we'll need to do an online training safeguarding course. Um, safeguard safeguarding is mandatory reporting, essentially. So it's um, a part of every school. So we'll do a train, you will do a training course before you can work in the UK. You'll do an online registration, which we'll speak about. Um, and everyone who's got their full registration, you can apply for what's called a QTS, um, which is a qualified teacher status. So in Australia, um, Victoria VIT, New South Wales, Janessa. Um, but yeah, you can transfer and get your QTS. If you are just a graduate teacher, you can teach in the UK or in England specifically for up to four years as an overseas trained teacher. So if any grads on the line, if you just want to jump on the plane the second you graduate, do it. Don't worry, you can teach up to four years as an overseas trained teacher. So um, that's definitely a pathway which everyone can explore. Um, do we need to keep our VIT up to date? As a question, um, you can just let the VIT know what you're doing. They can put your registration on hold, essentially. So whether you got your full VIT or whether you're provisionally registered, just tell the VIT what you're doing. Um, it's really, really common for educators to yeah just have whatever um, status they have put on hold. It's not, sorry, it's not even common. It's, it's just what happened. It's part of the practice. So um, the great question, Vicky. Um, the visas. Um, so the vast majority of people on this call will be applying for what's called the Youth Mobility Visa, um, which is a two year working holiday visa for under 31 um, people from Australia, New Zealand, the UK and some other Commonwealth countries. Costs about 1200 pounds. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're applying for the visa. There is a caveat for everyone on the call because there is a change to this visa coming into play, which is turning it into a under 35 three-year working holiday visa, which is great. So everyone gets an extra year. May mean it costs you a little bit more for the visa, but it means you get an extra year living in the UK too. This change is meant to come about this year, but it's been um, classic, um, mm. I guess, high-level government. Delayed. It's been delayed. Uh, yeah. So um, mm. uh, keep just don't don't let that extra year persuade your plans um, because you may. Um, it may not change next year as well. So if you want to go in the start of next year, plan your trips for them, jump on the plane and make it happen. We've got a visa support team who can assist you with the process. $99 to go through the service, but at the end of the day, it's, it's not too much to pay once you've um, uh, yeah, um, got the visa back. You'd be pretty happy that you paid the $99, but you can apply for yourself. Um, so Julia, great. So you've got that question there as well. So you'd be applying for what's called a skilled worker visa. So a skilled worker visa is available for anyone who doesn't meet the criteria of these other visas too. Um, so if you're over 35 or over 31, um, you need to get sponsored by a UK school. So the under 31 is an unrestricted working holiday visa in the sense you're not tied to any specific employer. You can work for ANZ UK. You could work for um, Banksy doing some street art. You could work at a cafe in Bristol, whatever you want. The skilled worker visa is different. You need to have a job offer from a UK school. It is more difficult to get that from overseas just due to the nature of the extra cost that schools need to bear um, and it's a longer term commitment for the school it's not impossible um, if you're a stem teacher um, specifically a secondary teacher a lot more likely primary is less likely so apologies julia if you do have a primary degree i shouldn't say apologies it just means it's a little bit more tricky as well so mm. um, we can still look to support you but it's not as a guarantee as what it would be with the youth mobility visa so it's a little bit different because it is tied to a uk school job opportunity the youth mobility visa once you've done your two years you might be thinking i want to go for five years and i've only well, i can only do two that's not the case once you're in the uk you can get sponsored to stay so if you've got um a job at a school but you're loving it becky and the team have got you in a school and you don't want to leave you can get sponsored to stay on which is great um the ancestry visa if anyone knows their grandparent or a grandparent is born in the UK, you can apply for a five-year visa. A little bit more expensive, but it means that you get five years in the UK. And then the other options are a UK passport or a spousal visa. Um, a couple of questions here. We'll quickly answer them as well, because I think we should be able to do it quickly. Do you have to pay for two years healthcare surcharge if you only plan to be there for one? You do, unfortunately. Um, so if you do do the two-year um, visa, you have to pay for that cost upfront. 
So, um, and I don't believe you can get it refunded as well if you leave. I'm pretty sure it's an upfront cost unless that's changed. Yeah, yeah. So that's, um, it is what it is. If my partner has an Irish passport, does this mean he will need one of these visas? No. So Irish um, passport holders have a right to work within the UK, which is great. So um, if you hold an Irish passport, you can work in England. Um, you could potentially, Lauren, apply for a spousal visa if you wanted to. That would be a different route you could take, but you could apply for a, a youth mobility visa as well. Um, and then Annika, the German passport. Um, unfortunately, Annika, um, the visa requirements have changed. Um, Brexit, um, bloody Brexit. Um, EU citizens no longer um, can work in the UK freely. You need to apply for a visa. Um, so um, Annika, if you're an Australian, the best visa you apply for is this youth mobility visa. So um, yeah, obviously just, um, yeah, it is a bummer. My partner came over on an Italian passport back in 2016, pre-Brexit. So yeah, unfortunately mm -hmm. that's um, no longer the case as well. So um, we'll keep moving through guys. Um, thank you for the questions as well, um, but we'll keep on smashing through. So travel requirements have changed a lot since the last time, um, since the last time I've done a webinar, but it's always changing. Um, but the good thing is it's changing for the better. So it's highly mm -hmm. likely you won't need a test before you go to the UK, depending upon which airline you fly with and which route you take. Um, it's highly likely you won't need to get a test and you don't need to get tested when you get there anymore as well. Um, we still recommend to be vaccinated for international travel as an ANZ UK recommendation, but there isn't a vaccine mandate in the UK. So if you aren't vaccinated for whatever reason, you could still work in the UK, though we do promote being vaccinated prior to traveling internationally and recommended to. The biggest thing to consider for your travel is just this red list country. There are no countries on the red list um, in terms of uh, the UK having quarantine requirements for inbound travel. So just keep an eye out. Like if you're going to travel to maybe a developing country somewhere across the world, that's obviously not Australia in the UK, somewhere in the middle, um, just be conscious of your travels there before you get to the UK. You, there's a very, very good chance you'll be absolutely fine, but it's just something to be across planning your overseas travels um, in preparation for your move to, but highly likely you'll be able to jump on the plane and you shouldn't have any worries at all. Um, Next, the calendar year. Do you want to quickly run on this one? I know I've sort of welled off a bit there, but I know I'll just try to get through the slides as quickly as no, possible. No, no, no. <laughs> um, some of you may well already be aware of this, so I'll just let you boost through it really, really quickly. Is that our academic years in the UK run from September until July. Um, so um, some people kind of refer to it as six terms a year or um, three. Um, so um, slightly, the, the kind of holiday times are slightly are different to to Australia. So you'll have um, the 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 autumn term, which kind of starts in September, um, and that goes at, that goes up until Christmas, and then you'll have half term in the middle, which is usually a week. You then have the Christmas break, which is two weeks, so obviously very different to, to Australia. So you have two week break over Christmas. You then have another half term break, as we call it, in February, end of February. You then have Easter break, which we're in now, which is generally two weeks. You then have um, another half term in May, which is one week, and then you have the summer holidays, which is between five and six weeks. So. So summer holidays kind of it generally starts at middle of July and then runs up to, until the beginning of September. Yeah, you pretty much get a holiday every six weeks, which is good. So if I'm traveling yeah, with your factory, motor factory, you can yeah. just jump on Skyscanner and you can click Bristol anywhere. Um, yeah. my, myself and our friends, we went to Bulgaria for a week ski trip in Borovets just because it cost us 15 quid to get there. I think it was like 15 quid um, each way. It's about 30 quid. Yeah. Um, yeah. And But you can do that when you're in, in living in the UK, which is cool. So, yeah. And it doesn't yeah. matter when you arrive, if you're looking to do casual relief work, a daily supply teaching, you can sort of arrive yeah. anywhere. If you want Whenever. in a contract role, start of the term is the biggest recommendation. The mm -hmm. biggest consideration for arrival times is if you want to arrive in the summer term, just be considerate that you have six weeks off, not too long after that as well. So you just need to plan in the sense that you're going to have a period of time where you can get income, but over the summer break, mm -hmm. the schools will be shut. So just making sure that you know what you're doing if you're going to arrive in April or May, just because you've only got yeah maybe nine or 12 weeks worth of work available too. It's a very workable time to arrive because you get six weeks off and you get to go travel, mm -hmm. but you just got to plan to know that that's going to be something you got to be ready for. So um, just keep us in the loop for you, your, for what your um, ideal arrival date is. Um, and then why ANZ UK? So uh, Becky and I would have given you lots of overview and we would promise we won't sell ANZ UK too much, but um, we want to partner with you with your journey because um, um, Becky and I, you know, we're really passionate about what we do and everyone mm -hmm. in the ANZ UK team is. And we know the positive impact educators have in the classroom, in particular in an educator short market, overseas educators 
really, really held in such high regard. And there's, um, yeah, mm-hmm. the impact you'll make in the British classroom is, is really um, uh, evident when you get there and you'll see it. Um, we'll help you out with blogs. Um, there's professional development available, the Facebook group, um, events, support, um, information packs. There's oodles of resources available. And um, the team are really keen to assist you, um, myself and the Bristol team, and just ANZ UK mm-hmm. as a whole, wherever you want to end up with ANZ UK. Um, we're really keen to yeah, assist you and partner with your journey. So, um, guys, that's pretty much us, to be honest. Like, apologies, we have run 10 minutes over. Um, Becky and I, we got sort of caught up on a few of the slides at the front. Um, so, we do say sorry for that. But um, a massive thank you. Um, you know, make sure you're following us on, you know, Facebook and Instagram, um, you know, just so you can keep in touch with everything. Jump into the Facebook group. Um, anyone you network, do send them our way. And then really keen to hear from you um, as well. So, love to have a follow-up call with everyone who's based in Australia um, to have a, a catch-up around your plans. And um, anyone in New Zealand, my colleague, Claire, we'll do the same and um, we also have Jackie on our team too you may hear from Jackie potentially as well um, and yes we will send the slides out to everyone um, so I'll send the follow-up to everyone um, if I don't I'll look to send it tomorrow actually I was going to say I'll send it tonight I'll, I'll probably I'll be talking off tonight guys apologies um, but um, mm. cameras off um, if you like um, post anything into the chat but Becky and I are happy to stay on for a couple minutes. Um, if anyone had any specific questions, um, more than happy to help um, at any point. But yeah, everyone will get the slide pack and I'll send um, a couple of links so you can click on a calendar invite and choose mm-hmm. a time to speak to our team here in Oz. And then hopefully from that, Becky and the, and the crew will be yeah, eager to catch up. Well, um, one one thing to mention kind of this one, just about information points the ANZ UK blog page it's not just people writing blogs and like oh this is my journey there's some really really good resources on there so if you're kind of wanting to kind of get a bit clued up about some of the stuff we talked about like all the key stages and the jargon and resources and things like that it's really really good we've got we've got quite a few teachers that have provided a lot of that material so I think it is quite overwhelming to think oh, I'm going to kind of make the move and what's it going to be like there's loads of really good information in there so um, it's not just about people's experiences it's actually resources so just if you literally just go into the ANZ UK blog page and just type in primary curriculum or something like that um, you'll find loads of information on there so I just wanted to point that out because it's brilliant I was really surprised at the quality of it when I joined ANZ UK yeah definitely and there's like lots of niche things you can find as mm. well like special educational needs toolkits primary toolkits a day in the life of a CRT yeah um, you name it there's there's something on there which is um, of, of really good mm. quality too so um, yeah yeah, it's really good putting that in there. That's it. Um, but love hey, guys. To work with you. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to work with you. Just, you know, I, I just, I just, I've, I've love talking to people that are kind of planning and making a journey like travel is a really big thing for me so yeah if we can help anyone in any shape or form then you know always get in touch it's um it's a great place to be I love it here and I just it's just nice to be able to help people just start living life again so yeah definitely definitely get in touch amazing um Venus so under 35 early childhood educator can ANZ you can't with that so that would definitely be something which um we'd have to probably follow up on a call with Venus too just in terms of like your specific qualification Mm -hmm. um and experience um early childhood it it is specific um dependent upon what qualification you have um because the skilled worker visa not all um educators um are eligible for the skilled worker visa there are some certain specific qualifications you do need so um we may need a yeah typical uh, venus after that but great question but yeah we'd we'd have to sort of work that probably a bit more detail with your specific um Mm -hmm. goals and experience but um we can we can tee that up um you know in the coming weeks ahead Amazing guys. Um, but yeah, like I said, join the Facebook group. Um, you know, we'll um, probably uh, call it quits for this afternoon. Um, mm-hmm. Absolute pleasure. Um, you know, I've, I've really loved talking about the Southwest of England. Um, you know, mm-hmm. we really want to support you on your journey over there. Um, if you're looking somewhere else in the UK, just let us know. We can assist there as well. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, we'll be keen to yeah, get you on a plane, um, whether it be London, Bristol, Wales, Surrey, somewhere else in England. We'll, we'll look forward to helping you, helping you out. All right. Amazing, guys. We'll enjoy and um, yeah, expect the follow up, the slides um, and all the resources that will come your way. And yeah, have a lovely afternoon. Enjoy. Keep safe. Keep healthy and um, look forward to catching up with you soon um, in person or on the phone or all of the above. Thank you. And Becky, thank you. Enjoy. Enjoy. Oh, welcome. Pleasure. All right. Thanks, guys. Amazing, guys. See you later. Have a good day. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.